Hey, how's it going? Welcome to a new series of videos on editing sound for visual media in Reaper. In this series, I'm going to walk you through the process of post-production audio for films, TV, and animation. We're going to start from the beginning, and by the end, you'll hopefully have a very clear idea on how the process is done commonly these days. We'll start from the very top, create a template together, talk about ways of optimizing our workflow for visual media, and then talk a little bit about spotting a video. We'll talk about some Foley and field recording, a bit on sound design and then discuss ways of quickly editing your audio together all the way to final delivery of your items to your post-production mixer so let's get started Uh, so before we get into making our template, I just want to talk a little bit about the sound pipeline in a film or TV project so you can understand my template better. So the sound in any visual media is broken down into three parts. There's the dialogue, there's the music, and there's the effects, or DME. Dialogue, as they say, is king. It's the most important part of audio in 90% of movies, unless you're Christopher Nolan. No matter how sonically interesting a movie is, dialogue always needs to be the focal point. It takes priority over anything. Imagine the club scene in the movie Matrix. Now there's music blasting in the speakers at a club, but we can very clearly hear the dialogue. The same applies to any car chase scene or any scene where it's raining or whatever. Dialogue is broken down into three parts. First of all, there's production audio. That's the audio recorded on set by a boom operator and mixed by a production sound mixer. Nowadays, sometimes these two jobs are combined into one because production audio gear is becoming more and more portable, so it's easy for one person to do them. Especially now with COVID going on, most productions would want only one sound person on set. Production audio is the most accurate representation of what's going on in the scene, but it's not always usable. The problem is film sets aren't perfect recording environments. Sometimes you're shooting an outdoor scene in a studio that's made to look like the outside but has the reverb of a big room. Sometimes there's a bunch of extra noise on set, like in scenes with a lot of camera movement, you can hear the dolly moving. In scenes where there are animals on set, there's usually a trainer off camera giving verbal orders to the animals so they know how to move and where to go and what to do. Sometimes there's rain in a scene. Even if none of that is going on, maybe the boom up is unable to get close enough to the characters to capture the audio perfectly because they will be in the shot. While dialogue is king, audio is secondary to visuals on production because audio can be recreated and a boom shadow in a scene cannot be taken out. All of which is to say production audio sometimes sounds like crap. It's nowhere near the quality you'd hear in movies. Sometimes a lot of it is salvaged through editing and DSP and all kinds of things but sometimes it's just not usable. This is where ADR comes in. ADR is short for Automated Dialogue Replacement. It's when actors go into a studio after shooting the scene and then they watch themselves on screen and they repeat the lines they said to be recorded in a studio environment. 90% of the dialogue you hear in most movies nowadays is ADR. The third bit is narration. That's audio that doesn't occur in the scene, but the audience hears. That is also recorded in studios. The M stands for music. Music is self-explanatory, but it comes in two types when it comes to movies. There is source or diegetic music, and there is score or non-diegetic music. Source or diegetic music is music that occurs on set. So in the club scene from Matrix that we talked about earlier, the actors can hear the music because they exist in the club. Usually music like that is manipulated to sound like it's coming from the environment it's coming out of, so a car stereo or club speakers. The second type is score or non-diegetic music. Actors in a scene aren't hearing the score. When we watch the Schindler's List, the amazing score done by John Williams is not heard by the people in the film. It's there to help the story along and add emotional impact. Finally, E is for effects, and effects comes in a lot of categories. There's hard effects, so those are sounds like doors closing, phones ringing, and elevators dinging. These sounds are usually recorded in real life environments and then mastered and put into sound libraries. In bigger films, they may want to record all those sounds with a sound team. If you're badass enough, sometimes as an editor, you go and record these sounds, but sometimes you don't have access to these sounds. If I need the sound of a Japanese sliding door and I live in Canada, it's gonna be pretty hard for me to locate one of those doors, so I would have to use a library. Next up, there's sound design. These are sounds that you don't find in the wild. 
So there is no Godzilla on the planet for me to go record their growls. So I have to use bass sounds, synthesis, and sound design tricks to recreate an approximation of the sound of Godzilla. Gunshots are usually sound design too. While guns do exist, sometimes they're not easy to access in many countries. But also you usually want a more amped up version of a gun in a film. Next there's BGs, which are also called ambiences or bed tracks. This is audio related to the environment in which the scene occurs. So if you're in a scene in the suburbs, you would have the sound of birds chirping and the distant sound of traffic from the city. These sounds are usually heard but not paid much attention to and that's the point. Their aim is just to put you in the environment where the scene is occurring. A close cousin to Bee Gees are specs. These are sound effects that don't occur on screen but again help put us in the environment that the scene is occurring in. So again in a suburb scene you may have the occasional sound of dogs barking Finally, there's Foley. Now Foley is an art unto itself. It's the act of recreating sounds as they occur on screen. Sounds of footsteps, sounds of objects being picked up and put down or smashed, and the sound of any movement overall by characters. So each of these is a separate editing task. Sometimes you have a separate ADR editor and a separate dialogue editor. Sometimes you have a Foley artist, a sound designer, and a hard effects editor. In smaller movies, you may be tasked with one or a few of these, or you could be in charge of all effects and there's a musician for music and somebody edits the dialogue. I've actually worked on short films where I've done all of these and that's possible too if it's a short movie. In longer movies it's possible to do all the sound at once but if you have a team it'll make the whole thing move forward faster. Once all these separate parts come together they are delivered to the post-production sound mixer and they are tasked with mixing these sounds to become the film. The director is usually in attendance as the sound mixer is mixing these sounds. Once mixed they're also delivered separately for later later use. The dialogue may be stripped and replaced by a dubbing in another language and the music may be stripped or replaced as needed. For example if you're making a trailer you would usually take the score out and put a more kind of exciting music and then you can also cut it together without the music cutting out. Now that we know all this let's get back to Reaper and look at my template. <laughs> 